Welcome to part 4 of our series, Mysteries of Life. Today I'm going to be talking about our universe and all the wonderful life that it may contain. People have been interested in life outside our planet for thousands of years. The Greek philosophers Plato and Aristotle first conceived the idea of an infinite universe, and Nikola Tesla said his wireless transmission system could be used to get in contact with beings on Mars. Particularly in recent decades, the human wonder for extraterrestrial life has dominated a huge proportion of media and culture. But as we've seen in the previous videos of this series, the processes that occurred in order for life to develop on Earth seem very improbable, giving the impression that perhaps life is an extremely rare thing. Perhaps, therefore, our planet is the only place that contains life. But maybe not. Our universe is so incredibly vast that surely, somewhere, a series of improbable events similar to the ones that took place billions of years ago here on Earth could have happened on a distant alien planet. Surely, given all the space and time of the universe, alien organisms could have developed a level of consciousness similar to ours. Surely we're not alone. These are the mysteries of life. As we saw in the first episode of this series, the formation of life on our planet had so many specific needs that the fact that life would happen at all in any planet seems very close to impossible. There are many different and specific conditions that were needed to create life on our planet, and a very specific planet that was needed to both create these conditions and also for these conditions to sustain this life. This adds to the low possibility of life forming on other planets, as the planet has to fit this criteria. In addition to this, in order to form perhaps more complex life, the planet needs to be able to nurture and to be able to allow for the evolution of life. There are so many specifics here that need to be met. Could they really be met on another planet? That being said, alien life doesn't have to be exactly like ours, and there could be a new type of life altogether, one that doesn't need to meet the same conditions as our life did, but other conditions that other planets do have to offer. In fact, it is almost certain that our perception of life would be completely changed were we to meet an extraterrestrial species. In addition to this, the universe, as I'm sure you've all heard before, is massive. There's an estimated 100 billion planets in just our galaxy alone, and that many galaxies in the known universe. Given the multitude of opportunity life has in the known universe alone, surely there must be some kind of at least microorganism in the universe. And like I said before, alien life will probably be very different to life on Earth, and could even be made of completely different elements. We're trying to reach out using radio waves and looking for planets with water on them, but they may be using something outside our understanding to communicate, and there's nothing saying that all types of life need water, just life on Earth has evolved that way. The universe offers a huge opportunity for life, and there could even be microorganisms living in our solar system. However, despite the inconceivable size of the universe, the development of any sort of life is only the first problem to be solved. Next has the issue of complex life. As we saw in the multicellularity episode, this sort of development brings with it all kinds of problems, and yet it has in fact been achieved on multiple occasions here on Earth. Animals are multicellular, and so are many plants, fungi and algae. This is important when considering the likelihood of complex aliens, because these different groups all evolved multicellularity independently of one another. And when you look even further into these groups, it turns out that multicellularity has evolved multiple times within them. For example, fungi have become multicellular three different times, and algae have developed it six different times. So, as you can see, multicellularity is not actually that uncommon. Of course, you have to have life of some sort there in the first place, but if this has been achieved on another planet, then perhaps multicellularity has also happened. That is, if the alien organisms are actually built of cells, or something similar. So if multicellularity is not too unlikely, how about intelligence and consciousness? Intelligence is obviously not as common as multicellularity in organisms on Earth, but it is actually fairly widespread throughout various animal groups. Notably, intelligent creatures include dolphins, crows, primates and parrots, as well as others. These organisms all display an ability to retain certain pieces of information and apply them to new situations, which is clearly an indication of some sort of intelligence. Consciousness, on the other hand, is a lot rarer amongst living things. We don't yet fully understand what consciousness is anyway, so it's difficult to say how widespread this condition is in animals on Earth. We know for certain that we humans are conscious, and perhaps other intelligent animals such as dolphins and maybe even octopuses are too. Although it's not exactly common, consciousness has evolved, and if this has happened, then maybe it's not impossible to consider that it can evolve more than once. We've seen multicellularity evolve more than once, as well as intelligence, so perhaps an alien species could also develop some sort of consciousness. The odds are certainly against it happening, but in theory it is possible. That brings us to the year 1961, 
when an American astronomer by the name of Frank Drake attempted to write an equation that would accurately estimate the number of active communicative civilizations in our galaxy. The result of his mathematical pondering went by the name of the Drake Equation. When you take a look at this equation, including the numbers used by Drake himself, you come to a very surprising conclusion about the likelihood of alien life, especially considering everything we've just talked about. Here's what the equation looks like. Although it looks quite complicated, it's really very simple. Essentially the equation just multiplies together how likely certain aspects of alien development are, resulting in the theoretical number of alien civilizations we can make contact with. R is the rate of which stars are formed in the galaxy, Fp is the fraction of those stars with planets, Ne is the fraction of those planets that are habitable, Fl is the fraction of those that life actually develops on. Fi is the fraction that develop intelligent life which then forms civilizations. Fc is the fraction of those civilizations that develop detectable technologies. And finally L is the length of time that those civilizations are detectable for. The numbers that are input into these factors however are not exactly reliable since many of the numbers change as new discoveries are made about the universe and since we have no data concerning how many times life has developed. So many of the numbers in the equation are just very rough estimates. When Drake originally made the equation, it was found that there could be between a thousand and a hundred thousand civilizations in our galaxy alone, and the results can vary wildly depending on what values you enter for all the different factors. So the probability of there being alien civilizations is very high, right? So why haven't we made contact with any of them yet? Despite this equation coming to the conclusion that there must be aliens, where is the proof? Why are we still alone? Where are all the aliens? These questions are collectively known as the Fermi Paradox. It would seem from the evidence that we currently have that we are alone in the universe as there is a noticeable lack of any confirmed contact with an alien race. This directly contradicts the Drake equation, however there are many possible explanations for why we have yet to make contact. As we've already explained, the development of life in the first place is complicated and seems unlikely to be a regular thing. And once you have life, it might not always become multicellular. And even if multicellular life is eventually achieved, that life might not develop into intelligence or consciousness. So the likelihood of an intelligent, conscious race of alien organisms establishing a civilization is probably fairly unlikely, despite what some of the results of the Drake equation might suggest. There's also the possibility that alien civilizations have indeed existed, but are no longer around in our time due to their stars dying or some form of self-destruction. The amount of time that the civilizations exist for would therefore alter the result of the equation. In the end, we can't really be sure about a lot of the data needed for a more reliable result of the Drake equation. So until we have a better understanding of life on Earth and somewhere else in the universe, the equation cannot really provide a satisfying answer to how many alien civilizations are out there. However, it does give us a good idea of what exactly we need to investigate further in order to get an answer. Of course, there have been many attempts to listen out for possible signs of alien communications. The Search for Extraterrestrial Life Intelligence, or SETI, which is chiefly operated by the SETI Institute, has been going on since the 80s. And in addition to this approach, there's also more active undertaking to send out our own message to the aliens. Known as the Messaging Extraterrestrial Life Intelligence, or METI, this spin-off of SETI is aiming to send out a message from humanity into the cosmos next year, with hopes of establishing communication with an alien civilization. However, this approach has been fairly heavily opposed, with some people worrying that it might be dangerous to alert other civilizations of our existence. Some are concerned that by communicating our presence, this could lead to conflict, resulting in our eventual annihilation. One of these people with concerns over the potential threat from extraterrestrials is Stephen Hawking. Although Hawking does support the search for alien life, he has said that we should not be bringing the aliens to Earth. Hawking cautions that a super intelligent race of extraterrestrials may not view us with any more value than we view bacteria, and this could lead them to become the agents of our extinction. On the other hand, the president of METI, Douglas Fakoch, has dismissed Hawking's caution. Although he respects what the professor says and does not take his warnings lightly, Fakoch sees METI differently. He points to the fact that we already have been broadcasting our presence to the rest of the universe for a long time now, with radio signals travelling out into space for the past 80 years. He also points out that the presence of life on our planet has been obvious for the last several billion years due to the composition of our atmosphere, which is one that betrays the existence of some form of life. So Vakoch reasons that a hostile alien civilization has already had the chance to come and wipe us out if they wish to do so. He also claims that if they're on their way to destroy us right now, then sending out a message could suggest to them that we're interested in talking and potentially save us from extinction. But what if there's no need to send out a message? What if the aliens have already found us? 
Despite the extreme unlikeliness of intelligent life appearing anywhere in the universe, it has happened here on Earth. And when you consider the enormous size of the universe, it starts to seem less unlikely that it could have happened elsewhere. After all, nothing is impossible, just highly improbable. What do you think about the possibility of life on other planets? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to learn more about our world and explore the mysteries of life, please feel free to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the rest of the series.